All right, so we are talking about registration for junior year today. We will cover everything you need to know about filling out your registration sheets and about what you need to do this next week in order to get classes scheduled for next year. So um, really, a couple things for you to know first. and get familiar with is your grad progress and historical grades in power school. So this is beyond just your simple checking your grades on the app, your current grades. This is checking out where am I at with certain classes? What credits have I earned? What do I need to earn? Um, really uh, getting familiar with grad progress is a great idea. As counselors, we are always looking at that, but it's gonna show you every class you've taken so far it's gonna show you what category that class fits into, and it's gonna show you how many credits you have remaining in that area to get. Um, so the next two years, as you're looking at that, you might notice, hey, I need another half of credit of fine art, so I might need to fill that this next year. So take a look at your grad progress. Uh, counselors are looking at it all the time, but it's really nice for you to be familiar with that as well. Historical grades are another great screen to get familiar with. They are uh, just going to show, it's just going to show all of your grades for classes you have currently, you've already taken. So it can help you determine, hey, did I pass or fail a class? Do I need to recover that? What did I end up with in that class? Your teacher currently might want to look at your grades in previous classes to know what you need to go on to next. So historical grades are also a great tab to reference. These don't work in your app, unfortunately. You have to go on a browser to access them. So just keep that in mind. Another thing to get familiar with is the course uh, registration handbook. So all of the descriptions of every class on this green sheet will be in that handbook. There's extra information as well about planning um, certain distinctions. We'll talk about that in a minute. But really, if you don't know what a class is on this sheet, you can look it up in the course handbook. Okay, if it applies to you, keep NCAA and NAIA eligibility requirements in mind. This is if you're a, a current student athlete and you're thinking, hey, I might want to play football in college. I might want to do tennis in college or swim or cheer. You do have certain requirements you have to meet to be eligible to do that. So you can look at those in the handbook. You can also go on their websites online to take a look. I'd also encourage you to make an appointment with your counselor, so either me or Mr. Sherman, if you think that that's something you'll want to do. We will help you keep track of those requirements you need to do and make sure you're all set and understand them. Next, the most important piece of just this need to know information is you need to fill out this registration sheet fully. If it's not complete in any way, um, we will choose your classes for you. And we don't always choose right. We do our best, but if we're making guesses, we can't always know what you really want to take. So we're really choosing for a full year next year on this one sheet. So we need to make sure each part of it is complete. And I'll go over each of the areas just to make sure we hit it all. Okay. So the process, what you can expect over the next week uh, February 12th is advisement day. This means that your teachers for each of your classes should take some time, um, either that day or throughout the next week, to talk about offerings in their department, to talk about what classes they should sh sign off for uh, for you next year, to talk about what they think you would be successful in, what they think you would be interested in. So all of your teachers, including elective teachers, should be talking about registration in some form on Friday. You can also ask your peers, your friends, upperclassmen can be a great resource about what classes they've enjoyed, what they've done, if they've liked certain teachers, um, and just get an idea of, hey, what are classes I really want to take? What are people who have similar interests? What have they taken that they've enjoyed? And again, ask your teachers about classes they teach specifically or classes offered in their department. They should be able to talk to you about that because um, your options you will see on your junior sheet are quite a bit longer and more extensive than your options that you have this year as a sophomore. Okay, so must do's. This is probably the most important part of the 
presentation today. So signatures on your sheet. If you have not already, please write your name at the top under student name. Please write it legibly so that we can read it. If we can't read it or we don't receive a complete sheet, we will pick for you again. You also need to make sure you're getting your advisor's signature. So your advisor will be your teacher who's collecting these sheets. For you in this class, it'd be Mr. Hoskins. You also need to have your adult at, ho at home sign uh, this sheet. So a parent or a guardian, whoever that adult is at home for you, you need to have them sign. Yes, it's your schedule, you get to decide, but we are expecting that you're having those conversations with that person at home so that you agree on the classes you're gonna take next year. You can also see to the side, um, there's a parent or guardian email. Please fill that out. Sometimes they are incorrect in our system. And so please fill out how we can contact them if we have any questions. On the back, if you flip over to the back of the sheet, you will see a signature line for you, the student. Feel free to sign that right now. This is you just agreeing that you are wanting to take the classes you put down on this sheet this year, okay? You'll also see next to the student signature line, there is a student phone number space. If you're comfortable, you can write down your phone number Counselors work on schedules a lot in the spring and the summer, and if we find a conflict for you in any way, we might reach out to you via phone call or text from our school phone just to ask you how to problem solve your schedule together. So you can put that down. If you're not comfortable sharing your, your phone number, we can also reach you by email or we can reach your parent or guardian. Underneath the student signature box, there are alternate elective spaces. These are super, super important, and they are required on the sheet. If you don't fill out alternate electives and you don't get your first choice, which is likely, you will have electives chosen for you again. The numbered spaces do mean something. If you put uh, your electives, your alternates, in the order that you'd like them, we will try to pull from your number one choice always. So put those in order. They also need signatures still. So even if it's an alternate, if it has a signature line next to the class on the sheet, that means you need a teacher's signature. Classes that all juniors take next year. So you'll notice this list is a little reduced uh, in comparison to what you're taking right now. Everyone will take English, math, and US history. Your current teachers in these subjects right now so your current English teacher, your current math teacher, and your current Western Civ teacher will sign off on what option you will take in that area next year. There's different options for each, and they will talk with you about what you're appropriate for, what they would recommend for you, and what you need to go on in, okay? Credit recovery is something to consider uh, if you have failed a class. If you don't know if you failed a class, you can reference your historical grades in PowerSchool. Basically, credit recovery is an elective option. You can write into that box on the front. You can do one semester if you failed one class. You can do a whole year if you failed two. And it gives you the opportunity to recover that core credit that you need for graduation. This is done all online in the study hall room on a computer uh, during your day, one period a day and you are able typically to recover about one class a semester there. You're expected to work every single day. You do have a teacher there for support, but it's highly independent. If you are considering this and you are thinking summer school is a better option for you, it's essentially the same format, but it's condensed into a smaller time frame. So we will reach out to you if we know you have failed a class about more information for summer school registration later this spring. If you need to recover a class, though, you can write in credit recovery right into your schedule. Historical grades, here is just a snapshot of what that looks like. So essentially, it will list all of the classes, what grades you received. Your current teacher might want to reference this to see what the, you'll go on to next year, and you can check, double check to see if you've failed any classes. Hopefully you know by now, but if you don't, you can reference this page. So on the sheet here, as you're filling it out, uh, there are certain check boxes and areas you need to make sure are complete. In the very top corner, 
you will see a box that says full ID and running start. If anyone in here is considering full ID or you've already talked to Mrs. Higgins about doing full ID, please put a big check mark or star on full ID as we'll prioritize your schedule. Running Start. If you're considering taking classes through FBCC's Running Start program, you will still register for a full schedule on this sheet of flathead classes. So you can check that box Running Start if you're interested. Uh, you may want to fill in these spaces um, down on this bottom column here with something like a study hall or an early release because what we'll do is we'll go in later when we know what class you are going to take and at what time and we'll adjust your schedule around that class. So right now, uh, Bryson Eck, he is our Running Start coordinator. He may not know what the options are this fall quite yet, so that's why we have you schedule yourself for a full day here at Flathead, and we'll adjust accordingly based on what college classes you wanna work in your schedule. All right. This box here in the middle is your core, that is for your core classes, so essentially you need to make sure that your teachers are signing off on every single box there. And you'll again talk to your current teacher in that subject to determine what you're going to take next year. On the back, any class that has a line next to it uh, requires a signature or initials. You might find that you need a signature for a class that you're not currently in or you may have to go seek that teacher out either in person or via email to get that signature. You'll also notice that classes are delineated by Y's, S's, double S's, or double Y's. Y indicates a year-long class, and you'd write it across the whole line on the front box for your elective. S is a semester class, so you'd only write it in a half of the box. So you could choose two different classes to go across that whole line if they're semester long. Double Y is two periods in your schedule all year long. So for instance, housing and construction, if you were to choose that, you would write it on two of your elective boxes because it takes up two periods all year. Same thing with double semester. Uh, that's a double period just for a semester long. So you would write in two semester spaces for that one class. If a class has a star next to it as well, that means it requires a prerequisite. So you need to take a class in order to be able to take that class to be eligible. You can look in the handbook what the prerequisites are for certain classes. And make sure at the bottom of the sheet you're also, again, filling in the alternates and signing. So this is what our registration handbook looks like on the website. You can navigate to this by going to the Flathead website homepage and go all the way to the bottom. There should be a button that says registration for 2021-2022. If you click on that, it will take you to a link to the handbook where you can find all the course descriptions, you can find distinctions, you can find rigorous core requirements, NCAA requirements, all that good stuff is in the handbook. So if you don't know what a certain class is, you can look at the description here. Okay, thinking about full IB, if this is you or you're even thinking about partial IB, um, know that anyone in here, anyone is eligible to take an IB class. Um, it's always great to challenge yourself in these areas. Your current teacher in subject areas can talk to you a little bit about what they feel you'd be successful in or encourage you to take IB classes in certain areas. Um, you're welcome to take the full diploma or even one IB class or partial IB. You can prep for IB classes by taking honors classes as a sophomore, however, it's not a requirement. So if you're not in an honors class right now for a subject area, that doesn't uh, count you out for taking an IB class next year. If you're thinking about full or even partial IB, you'll want to consider that by the end of your sophomore year this year, you will want to have PE, fine art, and career and tech credits complete or close to complete. Uh, full IB and partial IB schedules can be pretty tight, so we want to make sure we can fit in all those other graduation requirements. Mrs. Higgins already had her IB info night, but you can reach her either by email or she's in room 112 if you want to chat about the IB offerings, full IB or partial IB.
Okay, diploma distinctions. This can be found on page six of the registration handbook. So a distinction essentially means that you're taking classes in your schedule that are focused on a certain area of study. And you get recognized for this when you are a senior and you graduate. So a distinction, we offer them in all these different areas. And there are extra <coughs> components to these. Some of them require you to participate in a club or to have a certain GPA or compete in a certain way. So you can find all of these applications on our counseling website, or you can talk to teachers in these departments to talk about the requirements for the specific distinctions. And really, I encourage everyone to <coughs> take a distinction if you are interested in that subject area. Yes, you get a cool cord at graduation to be recognized for that, but don't build your schedule solely around that purpose. Take classes that will either prepare you for an interest, a career or college interest in the future, or that you're just interested in now. And sometimes you can qualify for a distinction in that way. Okay, rigorous core. So as a senior, if you maintain a relatively competitive <coughs> GPA, competitive, I'm talking like a 3.7 or above, and you do well on your ACT as a junior, everyone will take it in the spring next year, um, you could qualify for a full tuition scholarship at any college in the state of Montana, including U of M and MSU. So it's purely based on academics and the scores that you have with your GPA and your ACT. And it doesn't matter if you have really great character or an awesome person. There are scholarships that uh, pertain to those areas when you're a senior, but this is solely based on academics. So to be eligible for this, you have to take a course of study called Rigorous Core. This means you're going a little bit above and beyond um, what we require for your requirements at Flathead. So you can see you would take an extra year of math, four years of math, four years of English, which you already take anyway, three years of science. You can actually take four years of science as well and only do three of math. You just need to do either or. Social studies, you need three. We require two and a half to graduate from Flathead because you take Western Civ your sophomore year, American History your junior year, and government your senior year. So you need to put in another social studies elective to get that to three credits. So that can be junior or senior year, and they are listed on your registration sheet. Um, you can go above and beyond if you want to take a year-long class, but you need to make sure you're sneaking in that extra half a credit. For electives, you also need to take two years of a second language. So that means you, if you haven't done Spanish or French freshman and sophomore year, you need to register for that for junior and senior year to be eligible for this scholarship. So if you think that's going to be you, if you're maintaining a high GPA, and you anticipate that you can get a good score on that ACT, there are practice opportunities available, definitely look into making sure you meet the rigorous core requirements, going above and beyond what we regularly require you to do to graduate. Okay, a couple important dates as we wrap up. Signatures uh, need to be gathered and the sheets need to be complete by Wednesday, February 17th. So that is a week from today. So that means you need to be going around to your teachers, your core classes, and your electives, gathering signatures or sending emails, um, and figuring out what you're going to take. You will all turn your sheets back in to your advisor, which is Mr. Hoskins, and he will sign that advisor's signature on your sheet. Ultimately, it's up to you to make sure it's complete and you are responsible for what you write down. So make sure that you are filling it out completely. Your advisor will do a once over, but they're collecting hundreds of sheets right now. So really you want to make sure it's accurate. Uh, counselors this year will hand enter all of these sheets. You may remember from last year, you came in for an evening called Academic Flathead and you entered your own classes into the computer. This year, counselors are doing that all. So we will have a whole week dedicated to this. Um, not next week, but the following, where our doors will be closed. We'll be entering all the course requests in and building that master schedule. So we may not be as readily available to you during that time. If you need support, please still come down and we'll make sure that we get you with someone. All right, I think that is all I need to tell you. 
today. So I can open it up for questions now. Jason. Um, so my West End Civ teacher is going to be out for the rest of the year, so how would we get the signature for that? Yeah, great question. You may need to go to either a different Western Civ teacher or Mr. Hoskins can help you with that too. Okay. Um, Western Civ, like I know last year, um, you didn't have a social studies teacher, so your English teacher signed off for Western Civ. So Mr. Hoskins can probably help you with that piece and give you a signature for that. Good question. Others? Um, since like science isn't a required thing on here, do you have to just put as an elective? Yes. So if you're going to go on in science, for instance, because we only require two credits, um, you will write it into an elective space. And really, you guys, we encourage you to go on in science and or math if you're thinking about college in your future. So we have a lot of cool science options. Your science teacher right now hopefully will talk to you about those and what you want to do moving on. Can't. Um, what if like, you know you're not going to be here next year? Still register for a schedule. Great question. If you know you're moving or you know um, you're going to be in a different spot next year, still register for a schedule. That way we have a spot for you and we can build it in. We get a lot of movement anyway, and so we'll have new enrollments that will also like fill those spaces. So still fill this out. Yep, great question. Others, yeah. Are your teachers signed for the electives? Electives, so all of the little spaces next to the classes, like you'll see those lines next to them, that's where they'll sign. So it may just be initials, they may do a full signature, but if it, if it has a line next to it, that means it, you have to have a signature. So if it doesn't have a line, you don't need a signature. You can just write it down. So really you should be kind of traveling around to different teachers over the course of this next week to get those signatures, to talk about what offerings there are. Um, your core classes, again, they'll work that into their schedules. I know Mr. Hoskins isn't going to be in his classroom the next few days, but he'll work it in somehow so he can talk to you about what he thinks you should take next year, offerings like that. Again, you might have to travel to teachers that you don't have right now. You might have to go find like an acting teacher if you don't have an acting class or a culinary teacher to get that signature. So it's a lot of movement around. Um, I would encourage you to not necessarily interrupt classes for signatures. Try to go either in between classes. Um, some may be available at lunch or before or after school. Other questions? Yes? So where can we go to see what credits you need for that scholarship? Yeah, so that's all in the handbook under rigorous core. And essentially, it's just an extra year of everything. So if you think about it that way, it's an extra year of what we require you to do in the core areas, and just that extra half a credit on social studies. So some of you might have already worked that in this year. You might have taken like a street law class or American culture or something like that. You might already have that done. Um, but all the social studies offerings are under the social studies column on this sheet. So it's pretty much just an extra year of everything. Yes, and we recommend that anyway, even if you don't know if you'll be competitive for the scholarship. If you're thinking you might go to college, or even it's a good idea just to take extra math and science, depending on what career, sometimes the military, um, always a great idea to go on. Yes? Um, so I started out doing geometry, and then I'm taking algebra 2 this year. Would I take pre-calc? It depends. Talk to your math teacher. You may take pre-calc, or you might take math studies, too. Okay. So there's a couple different options to go on, like if you are in Algebra 2 right now, and really your math teacher will determine what way you want to go. Um, there, after math studies, there aren't any other options other than pre-calc to take. So if you want to take calculus your senior year, you'd want to take pre-calc next year. So four years of math, um, naturally, like if you're already at, at Algebra 2, you'd probably want to consider pre-calc and then calculus, but sometimes there are other options, like I know there's, I think there's statistics on there this year. That runs sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. It de all depends on how many students sign up for it. So something a lot of people don't know is we actually build the schedule solely around your requests. So if we have a ton of people request statistics, it'll run. We'll have maybe even more than one section. If no one requests it, or even just a handful, we might not even run it. So it really, this sheet, that's why we ask that you fill it out accurately and that you choose classes now that you know you'll want to take next year. 
because it determines everything. It determines your, the whole master schedule. It determines teachers and what they teach, how much they teach. Determines if we get to get new teachers. Um, so make sure you're filling it out accurate, filling it out accurately. A lot of you probably are familiar with schedule changes too. Sometimes we can do them, sometimes we can't. Um, we don't say no just to crush your dreams. We say no because class sizes are full um, and we try to keep students really dedicated to what they signed up for the previous year. We know things change sometimes, um, but really, really try to pick what you know you'll want to take next year. Um, so if you take like an extra English class as an elective, do you still have to take all four years? Great question. So he asked if you were to work in an extra English, like let's say you took IB Lang and Lit and you took mythology as an elective, which counts as an English literature, would you still have to take English as a senior? And the answer is yes. You have to take an English every semester you're in high school. So even if you took, if you're interested, awesome, take mythology as an elective. But you'll still have to work in a literature elective and an English elective your senior year to get your senior year English. That won't count in that way. If you're going to be an early grad, so if you want to graduate a semester early, we do double up on English somewhere. So usually that happens in that senior semester. At times, if you doubled up in your junior year, we'll take that as well. So that would be the only time it would potentially count if you're thinking about being an early grad, meaning you would be already graduated. Yes? Where do you find like the list some for like this class you're gonna take this class? Like, how do you find yeah, the prerequisites. So if you see that little star uh, by a class, you can look in the handbook. We can also, I mean, talk about them even like right now. Like what class are you looking at? Uh, it was just a general question. The general question, yeah. So in the handbook um, that you can get to on the website, you can just go uh, and see the description of that class you're wondering about, and it'll tell you what the prerequisites are. So here's examples. Um, these are like English, so they don't necessarily have prerequisites, but it'll show you um, prerequisite none or prerequisite based on based on like your English you're in now. Like it all kind of varies. And your each teacher in the subject areas can talk about what that means for different classes in their department. But this is kind of a snapshot like what the handbook looks like. Other questions? I feel like I went really fast this time because I knew I was being filmed and I wanted it to be older. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so does early release count as an elective? Yes. So you can take early release as a junior. Can't do late arrival. That's just reserved for seniors. If you want to do early release, write it into your schedule as an elective. Okay. There's also student aid is an option. Um, if you're thinking about being a student aide next year for a teacher or for like the main office or guidance or wherever, write in the study hall now because we don't replace those with student aid until the school year. So you work with that teacher and they communicate with us and we actually create a little section just for you for that. So like if you wanted to be Mr. Hoskins' aide, you'd put a study hall in right now, you'd maybe talk to him and say, hey, I'm thinking about this next year and he would say, yeah, sure, we can probably make that work. And then at the beginning of next year, you'd go back to him and say, well, what period would work best for you? And you kind of work that out together. Good question. Do you get a credit for being a student aide? Yes, you get a half a credit the first time you do it. So if you wanted to be a student aide like all throughout the next two years, you could if it fits in your schedule. Um, but you only get half a credit the first time. And keep in mind too, you guys, you can't, you have to register for six solid classes. Student aid and early release and study hall do not count as solid classes, even though you earn a credit for student aid the first time. So that means you can't just fill those elective boxes with study hall, study hall, early release, early release. You have to do six solid classes. You can leave one space for something like an early release. Um, if you're doing running start, that does count as a solid class. So let's say you do a running start class and we figure out, okay, you're gonna go take intro to psych up at the college from three to four. We would put seventh period as running start and you could have a study hall earlier in your day still. So we work all of that out kind of over the summer because again, Bryson doesn't really know the classes right now that they will offer. 
So that's why we have you register for a full schedule right now. Other questions? Yes? Are you allowed to take more than one like credit of science a year? Yeah, absolutely. If you're thinking of that, I would talk to your science teacher. Um, because some science classes can be pretty, can be demanding, and so they'll want to help you figure out, like, is this doable based on what type of student you are. So absolutely. Um, another quick note, if you want to take early bird or strength and conditioning, you can write it down under the box of electives. It's an extra. Um, remember, you do have to have a signature for early bird. So you need a PE teacher or a coach to sign off on that. Typically, we require you to do a full year of athletic foundations. So a teacher or coach would need to sign off on that if you want to do early work. That would be extra, above and beyond. These are all really good questions. Anything else? Okay. What time do we get out of here typically? One more. Oh, sorry. So is, is, an, is a language required? Not to graduate from Flathead. So no. If you're thinking about college, out of state specifically, a lot of them require two years of a language. So that is something to keep in mind. Again, the rigorous core, you have to have the language in there, but just to graduate from Flathead High School and get your diploma, you don't need a language. Good question. That always trips people up. Sometimes they think we require one. Did you have a question? So in order to take a test, like if I want to do this, I'm going to have to go to the 